In this video, we are going to learn how to do stem and leaf displays by hand, as well as in R. So we're going to talk about the theory first, then go over to R, show how that's done in programming, and by the end of the video, you will be able to do what is on the screen now. So those timestamps below if you're looking for just the R stuff, so check them out there. Anyways, a stem and leaf display is used to illustrate numerical data. So you could have, say, some values x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, so it's finite, and each of these xi's has two or more digits. In other words, these are numbers like 21 or 2342, or they're numbers with decimals like 2.0 and 2.1. Uh, these don't work too well if we just have numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, because it's just one digit there. Some of the things you might model in a stem and leaf display is something like exam scores. So usually you're given a percentage, so percentages can be displayed quite nicely with stem and leaf displays. You could have, say, the number of drinks per year per person. So let's say you have 10 people and you record how many drinks, alcoholic beverages, each one of those people have in a year. You might get a list, like say someone has 67, 62, someone doesn't drink at all, so there's zero. Maybe someone has, I don't know, 31. Maybe someone goes wild and they have 150, and so on. So you could do alcoholic beverages. So in other words, this is another numerical data point. In sports, you could find the number of goals or number of baskets scored per season per player. So you could take your 10 best players and you could see how many points they've earned over an entire season and you could plot them with a stem and leaf display. This is good for quantitative data and it's good just to see what the values are. In terms of like statistical presentation or presenting that information to the public, it's really not a great tool but it's a simple tool, which is why we start with this one. So I have an example here. Uh, suppose I have an exam with 21 students and I gave each of them a score out of 100. So we could think of this as a percentage or we can think of this as just a raw score. So I have 21 scores there. What is it? They range from 30 all the way up to 100. And how do I construct a stem and leaf display? Well, first what I need to do is I need to choose the leading digits for the stem. In other words, what's going to happen is we're going to split all of these scores up into two different components. In other words, uh, how we can think of this is we're going to have uh, a row for the 10s, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and so on. And then we'll have on the right side of this display uh, the, the ones column, we can call this. So single digits like 5, 2, 3. And over here we would have your 10s and 100s. So for example, uh, our highest score here is 100. I want to put this at the top of my chart, as we can see right here. So I can put a 10 on the left side. So this is what's called the stem. So the stem is on the left and the leaf is on the right. So basically I'm saying 10, uh, one is my 100, zero is my 10s, and then I can put a zero to the right to say that this is my leaf. So how I can read this is I can say, I have one person at 100. Let's cross this out, just so that way we know we've used it. Okay, let's do the 90s next. So I'm going to put a 9 here as my stem. So this means I have 9 tens essentially, which is 90. And I'm going to fill everything in from smallest to largest. So I'm scanning here, and I see 98 and 94. So I'm going to put a 4 to the right. So now this is read right at 94. And I'm going to put an 8 beside it. So what this means is I have one score of 94 and one score of 98. Okay, now I can do the eights and we can continue. Uh, usually in a stem and leaf plot, you do order them from smallest to largest, but when you have a large data set first, sometimes it's hard to comb through all the numbers and do it from smallest to largest. But I see an 84, so I can put a four here. I see an 85, so I can put a five here. Uh, do I see any other 80s? Oh, I see, I see another 85. Okay, so now I have two 85s. So I just repeat the digit again. So now I says I have 84, 85, and 85. I see an 88 here, so I can put an 8 to the right, and I have an 89, so I can put a 9 to the right. So I have five scores in the 80s, uh, 84, 85, 85, 88, and 89. Okay, I can do the 70s now. So what do I see? I see a 72, I see a 73, I see a 79. It looks like it's there, so I have 72, 73, 79. Cross these out. Now we can go into the 60s. Do this in a different color so we can see it. 
uh, 68, 67, 64, and three 66s. I also see a 61 in the middle there. So in our 60s, start from the smallest. So there's 61. I see a 64. I, three, I see three 66s. So I can put six here three times. I see a 67. And I see a 68. Okay, we just have a few more left to do. We have uh, one in the 50s. So we have one 55. We have one in the 40s, we have 43, and we have one in the 30s, which is just zero. So this is the stem and leaf display for the exam scores. So the process we've done is we chose our leading digits for the stem and we wrote them on the left side. We recorded the leaves beside each stem. So this is the remaining one digit. And our last thing that we should do is we should leave units for the data so we know how to interpret this graph. So I can give this a title. In fact, it's probably better just to give it a title. Uh, so we can say uh, exam scores out of 100. So now if I remove some of the clutter on the screen, like the fact that this says hundreds up here, and then we have our tens and ones there, and we get rid of that. Then if we just take a look at this graph on its own, we know this is a, a stem and leaf display explaining or displaying all the exam scores out of 100. Now, let's do this example over in our studio. So this is our studio. It is a free program. Uh, there may be a video in the future on how to install it, but there's tons of videos out there on YouTube that show you how to install our studio. So I chose this because it's a very simple way to start with R. So what we're going to do is we're first going to create a vector with our scores. So how we do this and how you create a vector is you take a variable. So I'm going to call this exam scores and we use the back arrow and the back arrow says we're assigning exam scores to, well, we're assigning something to exam scores. Uh, to do a vector, you use a C and then you put in all of your numbers. So I'm just going to copy and paste the vector already made from before. So these are all the scores that we had, 55, 72, 68, 30, 98, 94, and so on. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the vector containing all these scores. You can think of a vector now just as a list of scores, and I'm assigning it to this variable called exam scores. So I hit that. Uh, in the top right, you'll see I have values. This is exactly what I've put in, and it says, okay, I have a list of numbers. Those are my numbers. Now, stem and leaf plots are great because they're easy. We just use the stem command. So we can put in uh, exam scores and look, we get a nice little stem and leaf chart. The problem is, as you might see with this one, this isn't quite right. This is 20, 43, 45, 61, 64. In fact, if we take a look at the six here, we see it gets to eight and then it restarts. Well, that's because instead of doing every 10 right now, it's doing every 20 by default. So usually when you get lost, you can put in the command, in help and in the bottom right in our studio it'll show you things so what i see here is that we actually have some parameters so x is our exam scores this is the data that we come from and here are some defaults it says scale equals one width equals 80 atom equals one e to the negative eight so when we put that in we get what we just got so we don't really care about width right now we don't care about atom uh, these are commands you might use uh, some other time, but with this data, we don't really have to look at it. Uh, width just tells you how big the plot is, and atom is what's called tolerance. We won't talk about tolerance right now. But the scale function. So scale chooses how long the plot is. So with one, we have, say, five rows here. If we want to double our scale, we can put scale two. And now what do we have? Okay, now we have something that's nicer. We can have up to 10 lines of data instead of up to five, which means that we now have everything breaking down into the tens. So the scale that we drew on our page is exactly what we have here. A couple differences is that we don't have spaces between all of our numbers, and it's also in ascending order rather than descending order. So with the stem and leaf plot, this is just how it is in R, an SAS and an R. You can write custom scripts to make it a little bit more tailored to you, but this isn't a course in writing custom scripts. This is about using what's available out there in order to uh, actually do stuff in R, something simple, something straightforward that presents your data. So you'll see 
all of our numbers are in ascending order. So we have 30, we have 43, we have 55, 61, 64, 66, 66, 66, 67, 68, and so on. So that's how you can do a stem and leaf plot in R. It's, it's quite simple. It's just one function. Now, what you cannot really do in R, unfortunately, without writing custom scripts, is having one more number in the leaf. So for example, let's say we have, I don't know, let's call this a used car prices. So used cars in USD. So maybe this is how much they sold for. Well, if I have numbers like say 3219, 3255, 3021, 2900, it wouldn't really make sense. Well, it would make sense, but it would be kind of inefficient if we did things like, uh, sure, let's do a 321 and then we'll put a nine out there and we're gonna have a column for 325 and we'll put a five out there and 326 and we'll put two sixes out there. It's a little bit more convenient instead to make the cutoff at the tens place. So instead we could have something like 32 and then uh, one nine. Well, do we have any other, th any other 32s? Yeah, we have 32.55, we have 32.66 and 32.66. So we can see just with one quick example how we can uh, shorten our data set quite a bit and still have the same readability. So I have an example set out all on the left. So here's the car prices. So 3219, 3255, 3266, and so on. So when we do this with multiple numbers, you absolutely must leave spaces between the leaves. Otherwise, you don't know when the numbers start and when the numbers stop. Unfortunately, in R, when you try this sometimes, these numbers may round up, and it is very difficult to get two numbers side by side without writing a custom script. So you may be able to look on, uh, what is it, Stack Overflow to find something with pe or people doing it in R, um, but for the most part, typically what you do then is you do either some conversion of the data. So either you would just accept that this is how it's going to be, and you would do the three digit cutoff, so three, two, one, three, two, five, and putting those numbers out there like that. Or you could do something like converting everything uh, into, say, a log. So you could take the log of all these numbers and plot that if you wanted to. So log three, two, one, nine, log three, two, five, five, and you might be able to squish the data down a bit. Because in the end, really, you're doing this for statistical analysis purposes. So as long as the same operations done to every number, the statistics will. Uh, work out generally the same depending on what test you use. Anyways, that's it for the first video. Not too much R yet, but just a nice little intro to get us used to doing graphs. Uh, we're going to continue with graphs in the next few videos, and then we'll start going into probability and statistical tests. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you when I can.